<clears throat> Hi, everybody. Um, I'm very, very happy to be here. I'm really honored to have the Space in Between Project be part of this dialogue. It's very, very honoring, um, especially because the project has gone to different cities. It has grown with different communities. It has expanded. But it had its beginnings right here in Houston, Texas. So it's really, really special to have this exhibition here today. And for that, I have to thank Bridget and, of course, Chip and the Asia Society and everybody who's supporting this exhibition. So <clears throat> this is a very exciting project because, really, it's a, it's a project that has evolved over time and that has worked to really present to, to me and to the audiences that have seen the work how interconnected we really are as a community. And as I stand here and I present my comments today uh, as Margarita Cabrera, as the artist, I'm also here representing everybody who participated in the making of this work. And I have some names up here for you to see. Uh, Doris, Miguel, Teresa, Candelaria, Delfina, Carlos, Maria, Esmeralda, and Nora along with Laura Boston and Pancho Arguelles, who came to this project for the inter from the Interfaith Justice Workers Center, Eleanor Williams and Tex Kirsten, who helped give a little bit of a curatorial guidance. All of this group is incredibly talented, incredibly hardworking, skilled, very honorable people. And thanks to them, this project has really been a success. <clears throat> So space in between is inspired by the term Nepantla. And Nepantla in the Aztec language refers to a space in the middle. It's a space in the middle that can be understood um, as kind of a geographical space. It can be a sexual space. Uh, it can be seen as a cultural space. And again, spiritual space. Um, and it's a space I think that we can all relate to. It's a, it's a term and, and it's a concept that has inspired this project. And I think truly we all know a little bit about this space. We are all immigrants. I'm, I'm an immigrant from Mexico. I think everybody here is uh, also has some descendancy from another country. If it's not you yourself personally, your, your parents, your grandparents, your great grandparents. And that immigration experience has marked all of us here in ways that have become really inherent and important to everything that we do on a daily basis. And besides the immigration experience, space in between also refers to transitional spaces of maybe relationships, going from one relationship to another, going from one home to another, um, maybe changing jobs. Um, so really, truly, it's a space that we all know, and it's a space that exists that really where anything can happen and anything can change. So <clears throat> back in about 2008 or 2010, Box 13 invited me to do an exhibition in their uh, art building, which is situated in Cesar Chavez Boulevard on the east side of Houston. And together with the Interfaith Justice Center with Laura Boston and Pancho Arguelles, we wanted to bring in a group of immig immigrants uh, to create the project. Uh, Box 13 is an art building, and the history of that building is very, very important. It used to be a singer sewing, um, sewing room, store, um, and a school, a sewing school. And the vicinity and the surrounding environment, which was made up of a Latino community, really activated that building when it was uh, a working space, as a singer space. And so when I was invited by Box 13 to participate in this exhibition, I didn't see a lot of um, activity going on between the dialogue that was taking place, the cultural dialogue in the building, and the, in the neighborhood, the surrounding neighborhood of the Latino community. So I thought it was a good opportunity to bring those histories together, to bring those communities together, and, and bring up this historical connection that they had with the architecture. So we invited the immigrant community to participate with the help of the Interfaith Justice Center. We connected with them. 
Um, and as I do with all my community work, as I worked with the Interfaith Justice Center, I also work with other grassroots organizations to get in touch with our immigrant communities. There's so many wonderful grassroots efforts um, locally that have done such wonderful service to our immigrant community. So it was really important for me to work directly with them and honor their efforts. And so <clears throat> we got together, we brought a group of people to this project and we had our first gathering at Box 13. We sat around in a circle in, in, on our chairs in a circle, had like a roundabout discussion about our immigrant experiences. And it was really the first time for most of them to ever share their experience. And it was a difficult, difficult conversation. It was very challenging. There's a lot of um, violence, a lot of death, a lot of fear, a lot of shame, a lot of, um, you know, real challenging subjects that were really presented in these conversations. And for the first time, that happened with this group. And so we decided to take all of those stories and all of those important experiences and transfer them onto these pieces that we created. <clears throat> so you'll see, if, I hope it's clear enough, but this is a working table at box 13. And we decided to create replicas of uh, cacti, cactus plants that exist in the very well-traveled desert trails where immigrants cross into the United States. And we chose, everybody in the group, selected a plant to recreate that was something they had a personal connection to, something that happened to them while they were near one of these plants. So they, we looked through these books and we selected these plants in these ways. So you can see an example of one of the plants that was being chosen there. And um, we used Border Patrol uniforms and we cut them up and we gave them new forms. We recreated these cactus plants by using these Border Patrol uniforms. We, we obtained the uniforms from the different um, sourcing centers in the United States that provide these uniforms for the training centers of Border Patrol. Um, along the, the border cities. We also worked with some, so the green fabric comes from the Border Patrol uniforms. We also have this red fabric that you'll see popping up in the work that comes from um, some of the training shirts. So people have to go through different training levels. And um, so we also included some of those shirts as part of the, the making of, of these beautiful pieces. Um, the work is, is very intense as far as labor. There's a lot of repetition involved in, in the making of these plants. There's a lot of cutting. There's a lot of sewing. Um, there, and this labor is really important to be transmitted in the work. Um, there's a lot of fragmentation, which I think does speak of labor in many ways. And you can see, you know, the way we use thread, the way we use the fabric to really try to recreate these plants uh, in the best way that we could. And even though this labor seems to be very repetitive and very intense, in, in, in your opinion, maybe seems distant from personal experience, it's actually very, very personal, very, very spiritual to work in this way. And um, for instance, um, this lady, who uh, was intensely working on her piece um, had a really personal encounter with the work. Um, like I said, everybody chose the piece that they created. This one, for instance, was created with something like the bamboos that we see here at Asia Society, but they're called carrizos. <coughs> the carrizos grow along the river upwards, like the Rio Grande, upwards and then downwards into the water. And, um, and this is a story that, that um, this is a story of death that uh, <clears throat> where this lady was crossing the border and she was pulled by the current and holding on to the Carrizos with her daughter. Um, the current was so strong that she lost her daughter in this journey. And she came to this project knowing exactly the plant that she wanted to make and she brought the Carrizos from her home, which she had kept in her home for some time, and she brought them to this project. So she created the plants of the Carrizos for the Space In Between project. So they're very, very charged personal pieces 
that tell very important narratives, very important stories, real life experiences that took place that are extremely important to this project. Um, you see here some of the narratives that are being imbued on the piece um, through embroidery in every project that, that I uh, make in community, I try to present uh, traditional processes of craft. It's very important for our, for most communities where art and culture exist to really recognize that at the heart of all of this is a creative creation. You know, the, the, the presence of craft in a culture is, is everything. Um, and so for immigrants who are migrating from one country to another, having a closeness to craft is very important, not losing those traditions. So um, in this way of preserving craft, we, we try to create you know, embroideries that address crafts from Hidalgo, um, where they master the craft of embroidery. And um, so we inform some of these processes by learning about these stitches and the different ways of creating embroidery um, works. Um, so there were several pieces made, all told very different stories. Again, stories of uh, different ways of surviving their journeys. They also included symbols in these plants that spoke of things that happened before they came to the United States, maybe some of the reasons why they left their countries. Uh, also, the journey as they came, and, and then afterwards, some of the experiences that they've had since they've arrived in Houston. So you'll see different symbols throughout the works. And this was, again, a very community-building experience. It had, was a true transformative project um, for everybody involved. And we ended up having a very close-knit community uh, through this art process. And this project, like I said earlier, did go to different places. It has been in Charlotte, North Carolina, where another community of immigrants participated in the making. Um, and it is soon to go to Arizona through ASU um, University supporting um, a wonderful project there where the project will bring together communities from both sides of the border to the making of uh, these pieces and expanding the project even more. Ultimately, my dream with this project is to have a whole room of these plants representing hundreds of individual important cultural documents, if you will, um, um, that, that will kind of give our, our audiences a different sense of a landscape, a different kind of form that can be navigated in a different way. And it just it would be my dream to create this new American landscape form. That's my future. Thank you. <laughs>